Welcome back friends. In the last video we have discussed about the basic concepts of polarization such as uniaxial crystals, biaxial crystals, positive crystals, negative crystals and so on. In this video I will be discussing the theory of polarization, the different uh, polarizations especially uh, elliptical polarization, circular polarization as well as plane polarization, the mathematical treatment of these polarizations, the production and the detection of these polarizations, then some basic ideas about the quarter wave plate and the half wave plate and how quarter wave plate help in producing and detecting the different types of polarizations. So once again I welcome you all to my uh, lecture video and you are also encouraged to put your feedback as a comment so that I can improve on my further videos. So let's go on to this lecture video welcome you all so now let us discuss the theory of polarization here what we actually intend to do is to build a mathematical framework for different types of polarization we will be discussing plain polarized light, elliptically polarized light and circularly polarized light. So we will derive mathematical general equations for polarization and we will discuss the three different cases that is plain polarization, elliptical polarization and circular polarization. So for that, we are assuming an incident light of amplitude A. And the incident light of amplitude A, say this is the incident light of amplitude A, is allowed to fall on a bireferent crystal making an angle theta with the optic axis. So this will be the direction of the optic axis of the crystal we are taking a bireferent crystal which means that when a ray of light falls on the bireferent crystal it gets split up into two that is an ordinary ray an ordinary ray and an extraordinary ray okay so a is the amplitude of the incident light and this amplitude makes an angle theta with the optic axis so this will be the direction of optic axis. Then this amplitude A can be resolved into two components, one horizontal component and one vertical component. So this will be the vertical component and this will be the horizontal component. That is resolution of a vector into two components. Then if you can join this like this. okay. So this is the cos component and this is A cos theta and this is the sine component A sin theta. Okay. So we know in a bireferent crystal the incident ray gets split up into two that is O ray and E ray. The extraordinary ray will be traveling along the optic axis that is this will be the direction of E ray and the ordinary ray will be traveling perpendicular to the optic axis. Okay, now we all know that O ray and E ray travel with the different velocities. O ray travels with the same velocity in all directions and so the wave surface will be a sphere. Whereas E ray travels with a different velocity in different directions and the wave surface of an E ray will be an ellipse. So due to this difference in velocity, a path difference will be introduced between them when they come out of the crystal. Corresponding to the path difference, a phase difference will be introduced between them 
and let us assume delta is the phase difference introduced between the two rays that is the E ray and the O ray when they come out of the crystal. So now if you represent E ray and O ray with the mathematical equations we will be using the equation of a wave that is the general equation of a wave in simpler terms can be written as say y is equal to a sin omega t. So following this notation you can represent both E ray as well as O ray in a mathematical form. So how can we do that? This is the x component and this is the y component. So this will be the x component and this will be the y component. So extraordinary ray can be represented as x is equal to a cos omega a cos theta that is the amplitude into sin omega t plus delta we are introducing a delta because a phase difference of delta will be developed between the E ray and the O ray. So that phase difference is incorporated in the equation for the E ray. Similarly, the equation for O ray can be written as y is equal to A sin theta into sin omega t. So comparing these two equations, you can see that there is a path difference, there is a phase difference of delta between the two rays. Okay, so this is the equation representing the two rays. X represents E ray and Y represents O ray. Now we are going to make some simple substitutions for the ease of calculation. So what we are going to do is put a cos theta is equal to small a and a sin theta is equal to small b. So that this can be replaced by small a and this can be replaced by small b. So you can rewrite the two equations as x is equal to a sin omega t plus delta and y is equal to b sin omega t. Okay, so from the second equation you can write y by b is equal to sin omega t. So if y by b is sin omega t, what is cos omega t? So cos omega t will be equal to root of 1 minus y square by b square following the trigonometric identity cos square theta plus sin square theta equal to 1. Now let us expand this equation sin a plus b is sin a cos b plus cos a sin b. So this equation can be rewritten as x by a is equal to sin omega t plus delta or x by a is equal to sin omega t cos delta plus cos omega t sin delta that is sin a plus b is equal to sin a cos b plus cos a sin b. Now what is the value of sin omega t? Sin omega t is y by b and cos omega t is root of 1 minus y square by b square. <coughs> Therefore you can write x by a that is x by a equal to y by b cos delta plus root of 1 minus y square by b square sin delta. 
Now we will make some rearrangements and simplify the equation to reach the final step. So the first rearrangement is take y by b cos delta to the LHS so that you will get x by a minus y by b cos delta is equal to root of 1 minus y square by b square sin delta. Now the next step is to square the equation so that x by a minus y by b cos delta the whole square is equal to 1 minus y square by b square into sin square delta. Now we will expand a minus b the whole square so x square by a square minus 2 xy by a b cos delta plus y square by b square cos square delta is equal to we can multiply this is sin square delta minus sin square delta y square by b square into sin square delta. So now in the next step we will take this y square by b square sin square delta to the LHS. So this is negative here so it will become positive. So the equation can be rewritten as x square by a square minus 2xy by a b cos delta plus y square by b square cos square delta plus y square by b square sin square delta is equal to sin square delta. Now y square by b square cos square delta plus y square by b square sin square delta. So this is y square by b square can be taken as common then in the bracket you will get cos square delta plus sin square delta which is 1. So this equation can further be simplified as x square by a square minus 2xy by ab cos delta plus y square by b square is equal to sin square delta. So this equation will represent the general equation for an ellipse. Now having obtained the general equation we will discuss the different cases that is how can you obtain plane polarized light, elliptically polarized light and circularly polarized light from this general equation. So case 1 we will discuss in this case the phase difference delta is equal to 0. So if the phase difference delta is equal to 0 then immediately from the equation you can write cos delta equal to 1 and sin delta equal to 0. Giving these values in the general equation, you will get x square by a square minus y square by b square. So this is, uh, is equal to x square by a square plus y square by b square. This is 0 and this is equal to sorry this is 1 and this is 0 so x square by a square minus 2xy by a b plus y square by b square is equal to 0 this is nothing but x by a minus y by b the whole square 
so this is x by a minus y by b the whole square is equal to 0 or you can write x by a equal to y by b or y is equal to b x by a so y equal to b x by a is the equation of a straight line and hence this condition gives you a plane polarized light so this is a uh, how we obtain plane polarized light so physically what is the meaning how to obtain a plane polarized light that is if the phase difference between the e ray and the o ray is zero which means that both the rays are traveling with the same velocity with the same path difference and hence there is no phase difference then in that case you are left up with one ray that is there is no double refraction in this case and hence you obtain a plain polarized light so this is how we obtain a plain polarized light now in the second case in the second case we will discuss this is case 2 we will discuss a phase difference of pi by 2 and with the condition that a is not equal to b what is a a is the amplitude of the e ray and b is the amplitude of the o ray so in the second condition the phase difference between the two is pi by 2 that is 90 degree but amplitudes of both waves must not be the same let's see what happens when delta equal to pi by 2 you have cos delta equal to 0 and sin delta equal to 1 so substituting these values in the equation you will get x square by a square this will become 0 as cos delta is 0 plus y square by b square is equal to 1 sin square delta is 1 so this represents the equation for an ellipse so this will give you an elliptical elliptical polarization so this is how you obtain elliptical polarization that is the phase difference between the e ray and the o ray must be 90 degree with the condition that the amplitudes of both must not be the same now the third case that is here also delta is pi by 2 but a is equal to b which means that the amplitudes of both the rays are the same amplitude of o e ray as well as the o ray are the same so if you give that condition in this equation you will get x square by a square cos 90 is 0 so this is 0 plus y square by b square but we have a equal to b <coughs> sorry we have a equal to b therefore you can write it as y square by instead of b square you can write a square because a equal to b so this will be equal to 1 or you can write x square plus y square is equal to a square and this represents the equation of a circle and so you obtain a circular polarization so these are the three cases case one we have shown how we obtain a plane polarized light case two we have shown how we obtain an elliptically polarized light and case three we have shown how we obtain a circularly polarized light now when a equal to b we have a equal to a cos theta and b equal to a sin theta when a equal to b means a cos theta 
is equal to a sin theta which means that there is an angle theta for which cos and sin will have the same value and we know that when theta equal to 45 degree cos theta and sin theta have the same value that is 1 by root 2. So in this case when a equal to b theta equal to 45 degree what is the meaning what is the physical meaning of that that is if the incident light having amplitude a <coughs> makes an angle 45 degree with the optic axis then the resultant polarization will be circular and if the amplitude of the incident ray makes an angle other than 45 degree with the optic axis then the resultant ray will be elliptically polarized ray. So this is the mathematical theory of polarization. When asked for the examination, you will have to discuss this theory. That is, you will have to derive this general equation. And after deriving the general equation, you have to discuss the three cases. Case 1 will give you the condition for plane polarization. Case 2, the condition for elliptical polarization. And case 3, the condition for circular polarization. So this is the mathematical part of that and after discussing this mathematical part next we will have to move on to the physical part that is how will you produce these type of polarizations and how will you detect these type of polarizations. So for now we will be stopping the video stopping this lecture with the mathematical background of polarization or the theory of polarization. Uh, which will give you the different types of polarization when appropriate cases are applied. Thank you. So welcome back. We have discussed the theory of polarization, the mathematical basis of different types of polarizations. And now our next step is to produce and detect the three different types of polarizations. So before going on to the production and detection of the polarizations, we will be discussing two essential components in this process. That is a quarter wave plate and a half wave plate. So first we will discuss what do you mean by a quarter wave plate. So this is a very important question which can be asked as short question that is what is quarter wave plate and what is the action of a quarter wave plate. So after discussing quarter wave plate we will be discussing half wave plate. So essentially a quarter wave plate is a thin plate of birefringent crystal having optic axis parallel to its refracting phases and the thickness of a quarter wave plate is so adjusted that it introduces a quarter wave path difference that is a path difference of lambda by 4 will be introduced between the E ray and the O ray propagating through it. So essentially this quarter wave plate is a birefringent crystal. What do you mean by a birefringent crystal? A crystal which splits the ray into two that is we have seen that a calcite splits a ray into two a nickel prism splits a ray into two and so all these come under the category of birefringent crystals and the property of a crystal by which it splits the ray into two is called birefringence birefringence Okay, so this quarter wave plate is essentially a birefringent crystal that is in simpler terms you can explain a quarter wave plate as a wave as, as a plate which splits the incident polarized beam into two that is an E ray and an O ray. In addition to splitting the ray into two 
a quarter wave plate introduces a path difference of lambda by 4 between the two beams. A path difference of lambda by 4 corresponds to a phase difference of pi by 2. That is, a path difference of lambda by 4 corresponds to a phase difference of pi by 2. How will you get that? We all know a path difference of lambda corresponds to a phase difference of 2 pi. So, unit path difference corresponds to a phase difference of 2 pi by lambda. In that case, for a path difference of lambda by 4, the corresponding phase difference will be lambda by 4 into 2 pi by lambda. So, lambda lambda cancel, this will be pi by 2. So, this is how we obtain a phase difference of pi by 2 for a path difference of lambda by 4. So, quarter wave plates are mainly uniaxial. We have discussed what uniaxial is. Uniaxial crystals are crystals having one optic axis. Then, these crystals can be either positive or negative. <coughs> we know that <coughs> quartz is a positive crystal and calcite is a negative crystal. <coughs> In quartz, that is a positive crystal, we know the velocity of ordinary ray is greater than the velocity of extraordinary ray. Then immediately we can write the refractive index of ordinary ray will be less than the refractive index of extraordinary ray. This will be the inverse in the case of a negative uniaxial crystal. So, if we are going for a a positive uniaxial crystal, a quarter wave plate, then the thickness of the quarter wave plate must be such that it introduces a path difference of lambda by 4 or a phase difference of pi by 2 between them. For a, quarter, a quartz wave plate, the path difference developed between them will be mu e minus mu o into say t that is the thickness of the quarter wave plate that will be equal to lambda by 4. This path difference must be equal to lambda by 4. So rearranging you get an equation for the thickness of the quarter wave plate as So, this is a very important equation which gives you the thickness of a quarter wave plate that is lambda by 4 into mu e minus mu 0. So, this equation is applicable only for positive crystal, positive quarter wave plate. If it is a negative quarter wave plate, then mu e minus mu 0 is replaced by mu 0 minus mu e because in that case, in a negative crystal, V0 is less than VE and so mu0 is greater than mu E. So, in the denominator, mu E minus mu0 will be replaced by mu0 minus mu E for a negative crystal. So, exactly similar to this, we have a half wave plate. A half wave plate. And from the name itself, we know that a half wave plate introduces a path difference of lambda by 2 between the two waves. That is the E ray and the O ray. So, if the path difference is lambda by 2, what is the corresponding phase difference? Lambda by 2 into 2 pi by lambda. So, lambda lambda cancel and you will get a phase difference of pi. That means... A half wave plate introduces a phase difference of pi or 180 degree between the E ray and the O ray. So, you can write a very similar equation for 
the thickness of the quarter wave plate that is T is equal to lambda by 2 into mu E minus mu 0 if it is a positive crystal and T is equal to lambda by 2 into mu O minus mu E if it is a negative crystal. So, these are two important equations with which you can find the thickness of a quarter wave plate and the thickness of a half wave plate and this will be asked for problem t equal to lambda by 4 into mu e minus mu 0 or t equal to lambda by 2 into mu e minus mu 0. So, this is a, a very basic introduction about the quarter wave plate and the half wave plate. So, uh, in brief a quarter wave plate or a half wave plate is a doubly refracting crystal and uh, when a plane polarized light falls on a uh, quarter wave plate or a half wave plate it gets uh, split into two that is an E ray and an ordinary ray. A quarter wave plate introduces a path difference of lambda by 4 or a phase difference of pi by 2 between the rays whereas a half wave plate introduces a path difference of lambda by 2 or a phase difference of pi between them. So these two plates quarter wave plate say QWP and half wave plate HWP are um, essentially used in the production and detection of various type of polarizations. Now we will be restricting our discussion onto quarter wave plate. So what is the role of a quarter wave plate in the production and the detection of a polarized light that is how can you detect or how can you produce a plain polarized light, an elliptically polarized light and a circularly polarized light and what is the role of a quarter wave plate in these polarizations. So now we will discuss how to produce these type of polarizations and analyze these type of polarizations. So now let us see the production and detection of plane polarized light. Production and detection of plane polarized light. So the production of a plane polarized light can be done with the help of a Nicol prism. So as we have discussed earlier, this will be a, a representation of a Nicol prism and uh, you have a Canada balsam layer between the two halves of the prism and when a light is incident on the Nicol prism, what happens is that it gets splits into two, it gets splits into two and uh, the ordinary ray will be totally internally reflected into the crystal or into the prism and the extraordinary ray will be emerging from the crystal and this will be having polarizations only in one direction. In this case it will be vibrating the polarizations will be vibrating parallel to the plane and uh, ordinary ray it will be having perpendicular vibrations to the plane and uh, since O ray is absorbed by the uh, Nicol prism only the E ray gets emerged out of the prism and uh, so the resulting light will be a plane polarized light. So this is the production this is the simple method to produce a plane polarized light. Now how will you detect the plane polarized light? So, in the case of detection also, what we, what we are doing is, we are using one more Nicol prism. So, in that case, the first prism will be acting as a polarizer and the second prism will be acting as an analyzer. It will be like this. So, this will be acting as a polarizer, say P and you have another crystal here, the same crystal, uh, the same prism that is a Nicol prism and this will be acting as an analyzer. So as in the previous case what you are going to do is 
you are going to rotate the analyzer keeping the polarizer fixed. So what happens when the analyzer is rotated you can see that the light coming out of the analyzer gets extinguished twice in one full rotation. So it will allow only those vibrations to pass through uh, which is parallel to the optic axis of the analyzer. So when you have a full 360 degree rotation of the analyzer you can see that the light gets extinguished twice that is uh, two times the intensity of the light comes to zero and then it builds up. So if that is obtained at the output end then you can very clearly say <coughs> sorry <coughs> you can very clearly say that the obtained light is a plain polarized light. So this is the simple method of production and detection of a plain polarized light. Next is the production and detection of circularly polarized light. Circularly polarized light. So first we will discuss its production. How to produce a circularly polarized light. So in this case you have to recall what we have discussed in the mathematical uh, treatment of polarization that is uh, A equal to B that is the amplitudes of extraordinary ray and the ordinary ray has to be the same and also theta equal to 45 degree that is the incident radiation must make an angle 45 degree with the direction of optic axis. So keeping these two ideas in mind, we will discuss how to produce a circularly polarized light. So the first step is to produce a plain polarized light. A plain polarized light will be produced as the first step and second step is to introduce a quarter wave plate to convert it into a circularly polarized light to convert it into a circularly polarized light. So these are the two steps involved. First you have to produce a plane polarized light and second by introducing a quarter wave plate you have to convert the plane polarized light into a circularly polarized light. So that will give you the production. So what are the steps involved? In the case of production of a circularly polarized light, first we need a Nicol prism. We need a Nicol prism say of, of this category. So this will be a Nicol prism. <coughs> so the output of the Nicol prism <clears throat> will be a plane polarized light. Now this plane polarized light is allowed to fall on a quarter wave plate. So here we are taking the quarter wave plate in the form of a disc. Say this is a quarter wave plate taken in the form of a disc and that is mounted on a tube quarter wave plate is mounted on a tube okay it is mounted on a tube and uh, you have an outer tube also like this which can be rotated and so this is the stand for the tube so you are placing the this this is the quarter wave plate p is the quarter wave plate and uh, you are placing the quarter wave plate on a tube and this tube can be rotated. You have an outer tube also. So you have an inner tube A and an outer tube B. So you can rotate this quarter wave plate to uh, get the desired angle. Okay. So the plane polarized light coming out of the Nicol prism is allowed to fall on the quarter wave plate. So what happens? 
when the light falls on the quarter wave plate it splits into two and E ray as well as a O ray but since we we are producing circularly polarized light this condition must be satisfied that is the angle of incidence of the polarized light with the optic axis of the quarter wave plate must be 45 degree okay so how will you obtain 45 degree you have graduations here you have graduations here and let us have a mark yes here so you have a graduated scale here and with the help of the graduated scale you can rotate the quarter wave plate to get an angle of 45 degree so once you keep it at 45 degree what happens the amplitudes of both the rays that is E ray and O ray will be the same then here uh, the output of the ray will, will be coming out of this here and uh, here you are keeping the second Nicole prism that is that will act as an analyzer okay so you have the second Nicole prism that will act as an analyzer so this is a polarizer and this is an analyzer and you are analyzing the light from here so what happens after keeping the quarter wave plate at 45 degree what you do you rotate the analyzer and in each rotation you can see that you have intensity of light which is remaining uniform so for a complete 360 degree rotation of the analyzer you can see that the light after passing the quarter wave plate it remains the same that is we are having a circularly polarized light now how this happens when the ray falls on the polarized ray falls on the quarter wave plate it splits the polarized light into two E ray and O ray and introduces a path difference of lambda by 4 or a phase difference of 90 so the phase difference introduced between the two rays will be pi by 2 and since the angle of incidence is 45 degree the amplitudes of both the rays will be the same so upon emerging from the quarter wave plate the two rays E ray and O ray will combine to give a circularly polarized light and when you analyze the circularly polarized light with the help of a Nicole prism you can see that for each degree of rotation the intensity of the light in the output remains the same that means it will be a circular polarization the intensity will be remaining the same in each and every case but there is a confusion here the confusion is between a circularly polarized light and a un, an unpolarized light see as we know an unpolarized light is a light which has electric field vibrations in all planes in all possible directions so even if you analyze an unpolarized light with the help of a Nicole prism you will get a uniform illumination irrespective of the angle of rotation of the analyzer the same thing you are you are getting for a circularly polarized light also irrespective of the angle of rotation of the analyzer the output will be uniformly illuminated so how will you differentiate between a circularly polarized light and an unpolarized light that is how can you make sure the light which you obtained after this process is a circularly polarized light and not an unpolarized light so that uh, confusion is solved when we detect the light in the next stage so having produced the light with a confusion whether it is a circularly polarized light or an unpolarized light now we move on to the detection part of the circularly polarized light in the detection part 
since we have the confusion whether the light obtained in the previous case is circularly polarized or unpolarized what we are going to do is the output from the quarter wave plate is allowed to fall on the second quarter wave plate so in the analysis process also you are using another quarter wave plate so if you represent it with a with a diagram say you can uh, do it like this so this will be the circularly polarized light say it is cpl circularly polarized light which we obtained from the earlier step is allowed to fall on a quarter wave plate so what happens when a circularly polarized light falls on a quarter wave plate what happens is that a quarter wave plate splits the circularly polarized light into two also it introduces an additional path difference of say 90 degree or pi by 2 between them so already this circularly polarized light has a path difference of 90 degree so initially this is having a path difference of 90 degree because circularly polarized light was produced with the help of a quarter wave plate so during the production itself the quarter wave plate has introduced a path difference of pi by 2 so when you pass this circularly polarized light into a quarter wave plate for the second time again the quarter wave plate introduces a path difference of pi by 2 so the total path difference will become pi by 2 plus pi by 2 is equal to pi that is 180 degree so 180 degree means if this is one ray and this is another ray so this will be 180 degree so the result is that a circularly polarized light when passed through a quarter wave plate it gets converted into a plane polarized light so this is a plane polarized light plane polarized light so now as the last step what you are going to do is you are going to analyze the plane polarized light with the help of a nicol prism analyzer this is a nicol prism analyzer nicol prism analyzer will be the third stage here and this is the output so when you analyze the light with the help of a nicol prism analyzer since the input to this analyzer is a plane polarized light the light will get extinguished twice when you rotate the nicol prism analyzer okay on the other hand if you are introducing an unpolarized light because we were confused in the earlier stage whether the light is is unpolarized light or it is circularly polarized light so if you are introducing an unpol unpolarized light into the quarter wave plate what happens is that there will be no change for the unpolarized light even if you pass it through a quarter wave plate and so the same light appears here as the input and in the output you will get a uniform illumination for all degrees of rotation of the analyzer so if the input light is a circularly polarized light then in the output you will have zero intensity twice and maximum intensity twice because you are having a plane polarized light whether as, as whereas if you are using an unpolarized light then then also the output of the nicol prism will have a uniform illumination for all the degrees of rotation so from this you can discriminate between the two and you can decide or you can confirm whether the light you produced in the previous step was a circularly polarized light or an elliptically uh, sorry or a uh, unpolarized light the last topic is the production and detection of elliptically polarized light so 
the production of elliptically polarized light is very much similar to that of circularly polarized light except that a is not equal to b and theta is not equal to 45 degree so if you are going to produce an elliptically polarized light then you must make sure that the polarized light falling on the quarter wave plate does not make an angle 45 degree it can make any other angle except 45 degree if it doesn't make an angle 45 degree with the optic axis of the quarter wave plate then a not equal to b condition will be satisfied okay so again first you have a, a nicole prism say a nicole prism and uh, the output of a nicole prism will be a plain polarized light and that is allowed to fall on a quarter wave plate i have drawn a quarter wave plate with the experimental setup uh, when we discuss circular polarization light you can use the same figure here also but you have to make sure that the angle is not 45 degree so the output of a quarter wave plate will be an elliptically polarized light and this is again uh, allowed to fall on a nicole prism the first nicole prism will be analyzed uh, will be used as a polarizer and this will act as an analyzer the second one will be acting as an analyzer okay so the output of the crystal of the prism will be an elliptically polarized light that is the quarter wave plate will split the plane polarized light into two e ray and o ray and also introduces an additional path difference of a 90 degree between them and upon emerging from the quarter wave plate the two rays combine to form an elliptically polarized light since the angle of incidence of the plane polarized light with the optic axis of the quarter wave plate is not equal to 45 degree if it is 45 degree you will be obtaining circularly polarized light so that that point has to be made clear okay then the output of the nicole prism the second nicole prism will be an elliptically polarized light so when you rotate the nicole prism the analyzer you can see that the light varies between a maximum and a minimum and it will never go to zero again as in the uh, previous case we have a small confusion here that is elliptically polarized light elliptically polarized light and partially polarized light partially polarized light are alike Partial polarization means you have a mixture of a polarized light and an unpolarized light. And elliptically polarized and partially polarized light, they behave in a similar fashion when you rotate the analyzer. Why? In partially polarized light and in elliptically polarized light, the resultant intensity of the light is found to vary between a maximum and a minimum and it will never go to zero so in this case also we have the same confusion how will you uh, uh, how will you confirm that the light you obtained is elliptically polarized one and not a partially polarized one so for that again as in the previous case we are going to the detection stage the detection stage and here we will be using another quarter wave plate as in the previous case so the light which we obtained from the production of polarized light and we believe that it is an elliptically polarized light is allowed to fall on a second quarter wave plate so now already this elliptically polarized light has a path different uh, has a phase difference of pi by 2 and when it is allowed to fall on the next quarter wave plate an additional path difference of pi by 2 is created or it is uh, given to the beam and uh, when it emerges out of the quarter wave plate what happens the total path difference between becomes pi by 2 plus pi by 2 uh, that is equal to pi 
which is 180 degree again as in the previous case you will have a plane polarized light so this will be a plane polarized light so the output will be a plane polarized light and then it is given to the nicole prism analyzer nicole prism analyzer and what happens the output in the output if you are introducing a plane polarized light then you can see that the intensity becomes zero two times and it becomes maximum twice when you rotate the nicole prism through 360 degree whereas if you are introducing a partially polarized light so this is a partially this is partially polarized light in that case the output will again be you you will have a complete illumination or the intensity varies between a maximum and a minimum and the intensity will never go to zero in the case of a partially polarized light so from this result you can determine whether the light you produced in the previous stage was a elliptically polarized one or a partially polarized one so this is the detection of elliptically polarized light so in a nutshell in this uh, lecture video we have discussed the theory of polarization of types of polarization that is plain polarized light then elliptically polarized light circularly polarized light what is the mathematical equation for these polarizations then how to produce these polarizations how to detect these polarizations and uh, what is the role of a quarter wave plate in the detection and the production of polarizations and uh, what are the features of quarter wave plate as well as the features of half wave plate even though we don't use half wave plate in the production and the detection of polarizations in connection with the quarter wave plate you can discuss half wave plate also which also works in a similar fashion so uh, this is a type of an essay which can be asked in the examination so you have to be clear with the concepts with the ideas with the uh, mathematical steps we followed and uh, with the cases we have discussed leading to the different types of polarization and how we produce the polarization how we detect the polarization and what is the role of a quarter wave plate in producing and detecting the different types of polarization so this is a very important topic which you have to study it's actually it is very simple so you have to understand the concepts and then you have to study the this uh, in detail so with this lecture we come to the end of polarization and uh, uh, all these lectures have been prepared based on the syllabus of uh, undergraduate course in physics so you can follow these uh, uh, lectures for uh, your studies so you, you can uh, understand the theory you can understand the different steps and the physics behind it and uh, you can very easily Uh, use this lecture videos the information you gather from this lecture videos for your examinations so once again thank you all and wish you all a very happy learning thank you